Railway Company. I have great pleasure as District Superintendent to give credit to these young people for their prompt and courageous action. They got right in front of a racing train <laughs> and stopped it. <laughs> Thus averting a terrible accident. Who knows what might have happened? People would have got killed, you know. But because of their great bravery and presence of mind, no one was hurt. Now, without any more ado, <laughs> as you all know, I am a man of few words. <laughs> um, I would like, we would like you to accept these gifts as small token of our appreciation. short time that I've seen them to look forward to knowing them better. If I had to rename the Waterbury children, I would call them the three saviors of the steam road, or perhaps the railway children. <laughs> and now, my dears, Roberta, Phyllis, Peter, from the directors of the Northern and Southern Railway, in grateful recognition of a courageous and brave action which averted an accident on August 15th, 1905. We must make a speech now and thank everyone for their kindness. Uh, begin, ladies and gentlemen. Oh dear. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's most awfully good of you, and we shall treasure the watches all our lives. But really, we don't deserve it, because what we did wasn't anything, really. At least, I mean, it was awfully exciting, and what I mean to say. Thank you all very, very much.
Now then, I believe my train is about to depart. All aboard! Thank <laughs> you. 
the use of father and mother with every little thing, especially if she's busy. Come on, let's go down to the village now and begin. Why should we stop? Mrs. Ransom at the post office. She's in dear. Mrs. Ransom, Mrs. Ransom. It's Mr. Perks' birthday next week. We're collecting a present for him. Would you like you, Mr. Perks, a present? Perks? Well, look here. I've got a prayer round the back of the wood lodge. It was got for my Emmys first. That didn't live but six months. And she never had but that one. I'd like Mrs. Perks to have it. It'd be a help to her with that great boy of hers. Will you take it along? Yes, yes, please. yes. Well, young man, you nip round to the wood lodge and bring it out. It'll need a good dust off, mine. Oh, you are an old dear. <laughs> well, there it is. I don't know, but what? I have given it to her before, if I thought of it. Only I didn't quite know if she'd accept of it from me. You tell her it was my Emmy's little one's crown. Oh, this is the next thing that there's going to be a real life baby in it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. here, I'll give you some peppermint cushions for the little ones, and, and then you run along before I give you the roof off my head and the clothes off my back. <laughs> Thank you. And some people were kind.
like, as a general rule. Well, we knew it was his birthday, and we've got some presents for him here in the perambulator. Well, I wrote down what she said, and you'll see. 
That's her mother. A little close to Mrs. Perks's children, Mother said. I'll find some of Phyllis's things that she's grown out of if you're quite sure that Mr. Perks wouldn't be offended and think it's meant for charity. I'd like to do some little thing for him because he's so kind to you. I can't do much because we're poor ourselves. Well, that's all right. Your ma's a born lady. We'll keep the little frocks and whatnot, eh, Nell? <laughs> then there's a perambulator in the suite. There for Mrs. Ransom. She said, I dare say Mr. Pex's children would like the suite, and, and the perambulator was got for Miami's first. <laughs> it didn't live for six months, and she's never had one that one. I'd like Mrs. Pex to have it. It will be a help with her fine boy. I'd have given it before if I'd been sure she'd accepted it from me. Bert, I can't take the pram back and I won't, so don't you even ask me. I'm not asking anything. Then the shovel. Mr. James made it for you himself. And he said, where is it? Oh yes, here. He said, you tell Mr. Perks it's a great pleasure to make a little trifle for a man as is so much respected. And then he said he, could wish, he wished he could shoe your children and his own children like they do the horses because, well, he knew what the price of shoe leather was. Well, James is a good enough chap. Then there's the honey and the bootlaces from the cobbler. He said he respected a man that paid his way, and the butcher said the same. And the old turnpike woman said many was the time he'd lent her a hand to their garden when you were a lad, and things like that came home to roost. I don't know what she meant. And anyone who gave anything said they liked you, and that it was a very good idea of ours, and nobody said anything about charity or anything horrible like that. And the old gentleman gave Peter a gold pound for you, and said you were a man who knew your work. And I thought we'd love to know how fond people are of you. And I was never so unhappy in my life. Goodbye. I hope you'll forgive us someday. Stop. I take back everything I said contrary to what you wish. Now, put on the kettle. Well, we'll take the things away if you're unhappy about them. But I think everybody will be most awfully disappointed, as well as us. It's, it's not that I'm unhappy about them. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been better pleased, not with the gifts, although they're an A1 collection. Just knowing that we have the kind respect of our neighbors, that's worth having, ain't Nell? Oh, I think it's all worth having, and you've got to make the most ridiculous fuss about nothing, if you ask me. No, I ain't. If a man doesn't respect himself, no one will do it for him. But everyone respects you. They all said so. Well, I knew you'd like it when you really understood. We'll stay for tea then. May the garland of friendship be evergreen. May the garland of friendship be evergreen. Well, 
I found these old magazines in the waiting room. I was doing a little bit of cleaning, and they were just in the cupboard collecting dust, and I thought maybe you'd want them. There's pictures in there, you can color them in with chalk. Anyway, I wrapped them up in some paper for you. You're dead. End of trial, verdict guilty, sentence five years penal servitude. Oh, Daddy, I don't believe it. You never did it. Never, never, never. Roberta. 
P.S. Mother would send her kind regards if she knew I'm writing, but it's no use telling her I am, in case you can't do anything. But I know you will. Bobby, with best love. Hello. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. There's going to be a paper chase this afternoon. Mother's given us a picnic lunch. A what? Grammar school. Kirk thinks that her will go along the line at first. We might go to the cutting. We can see a long way from up there. Do let's go. Come on, Bobby. Look, here comes the hair now.
Over here, he's in the tunnel. Don't be afraid that I'm going to try to interfere. One never knows. 
very wonderful and beautiful things do happen, don't they? And we live most of our lives in the hope of that. Well, now, Jim, I shall call back later in the week and see how you do. Dear me, where's my hat? Uh, will Bobby come with me to the gate?
Pascal Johnson and told the people in the station to look out for us and wait. He knew we should like it. This was extraordinarily wrong. Most extraordinary. Don't you think the old gentleman's way of signal significant? No. I do. I thought he was trying to explain something to us with this newspaper. Explain what? I don't know. But I do feel most awfully funny. Just exactly as if something was about to happen. Bye. 